from Seward's Gymnasium on the campus of Allen High School in Allentown, Pennsylvania, RCN Television presents live coverage of BIAA basketball. This is AA boys in the first round, and it features the Trojans of Troy under head coach Bob Woodward, 22 and 4 on the year. They are the number three team out of District 4 as they take on the Crusaders of Notre Dame High School, the district champion out of District 11 under Pat Boyle. 20 and 5 on the year. Hello, everybody. I'm Gary Laubach, along with Dick Tracy. Glad you are with us. Game two of four same day covered games today, as we've got Parkland following up against Lower Marion and then Liberty William Penn at 9 30. This one should be interesting. The Trojans play solid defense, they rebound well, and they hustle. And that seems to be the key, according to Bob Woodward. He said defense and rebounding have to be a constant. You never know how you're going to shoot the basketball. Let's take a look at their starting lineup. And Dick, when they want points, they go to Jordan Brunel. He's got 1,300 plus. Coming in, sporting just below a 20 point per game average. Gary Stark, three juniors and two sophs. He can hit from the outside. He's got 33 triples. But the real outside shooter is Christopher Stroop. He averages 13.6 points and he's got 43 as they have 140 threes on the season. We turn our attention to the Crusaders of Notre Dame High School. They just won their sixth district title. Pat Boyle just won his third. They had a great start to the season, 9-0, and oh, and then injuries and illness really hurt this ball club. Andrew Kohler maybe being the biggest injury when he hurt his ankle. He has been able to rest it for a full week. And Dick, Pat Boyle certainly hopes that Andrew Kohler is just about 100%. Yeah, they've had multiple problems in Gary, and as you said, it's been stretched out the whole year. It hasn't been a one or two week period, but at one game you talked to about eight people that were not 100% and ready to go full time. Uh, he's overcome that though, because one of, the, one of the few times in his career, Pat has great size, and he even has him playing on the perimeter. Kohler is one of the best passers around. They've had problems, as we mentioned, with a viral, viral infection to Andrew Mitzak, a herniated disc by Bartholomew Palumbo, a mono from Blair Rosetto, and Kohler's ankle injury, so they really have been beaten up here late in the season. But right now, it looks like most everybody is ready. Pat Boyle says the same thing. Rebounding is critical. We want to score in the paint. That's where we think we can beat this basketball team. Well, we'll see who beats whom when we come back. The introduction of today's starting lineups right after this timeout. Hey, basketball fans. If you love dealing with a winning team, head to the leader, Kleckner's in Whitehall and Amaz for the fabulous GE tip-off sale. Browse our huge selection of GE ranges, GE refrigerators, GE dishwashers, GE washers, and GE dryers. Now at Kleckner's, get great savings plus free delivery. Free Holloway of Old, a full parts department and their own factory train tech. Stop in today. See why Kleckner's has been serving the Lehigh Valley since 1945. Two locations, Kleckner's, 2177 MacArthur Road in Whitehall and 575 Chestnut Street, Amaz. Since the Overhead Door Company makes the original overhead door, the people who install and service them take them pretty seriously. Call or log on for the overhead door dealer nearest you. He doesn't report to a management committee. He doesn't report to a marketing department. He reports to Mary Johnson's arthritis, to Sally Wickstrom's upset stomach, and to Greg Porter's poison oak. He's your family prescription center pharmacist. He lives and works right here in town, so that means he reports to you. Call Family Prescription Center today at 866-0709. Taking the time to care, Family Prescription Center. You get a look at the Troy Trojans. They will be the visitors here this afternoon. Notre Dame will be the home team, the winner of this game. Gets either Imhotep Charter, 27 and 1 on the year, the District 12 champ, or Delone Catholic, the number three team out of District 3, 18 and 8, as they are playing at Southern Philadelphia High School. 
today. And obviously, uh, Imhotep will be a favorite in that ball game. I'm not sure anybody wants to play them. Notre Dame lost to them 62-38 a couple of years ago. Number five is Christopher Schroop. 6'1", junior, 13.6 a game, 7.6 rebounds, and 40 triples. Next is Vance Spencer, 5'11", senior. He wears number 10, 5.4 points a game. Another good perimeter player is Brian House, number 11, a 6'4", junior. He's good inside, too, 6.7 rebounds, 7.9 points. Point guard is number 12, Chance Wright, 6'0", senior, 6.6 a game. And their leading scorer is 21, Jordan Brunel, coming off 33 points against Southern Columbia. 5'11", he's a junior, 20 points per ball game. Their head coach is Bob Woodward. Bob is in his fifth season, and in those five seasons, he's won 54 ball games. But he has done them very methodically, making this a good program. Number 30 is Andrew Kohler for Notre Dame. 6'5", junior, 8.4 a game. 32 is Max Hughes, a 6'1", senior, 14.1 a game. He was all Colonial League. Next out is Nick Piazza, number 42, a 6'2", senior. 4.2 points a game. Four is Andrew Mitzak, a six-foot senior, 5.7 a game, and five is Joe G and Joby. He's a 6'3 junior, averaging 12.8 a game. As Pat Boyle has his son in the pack, takes him out of that scrum and has his team ready to go. Pat is in his 13th year, and he just won his 250th game by knocking off Salisbury for the district championship. John Fanunis, Brian Layton, and Charles Majikis are your officials for this afternoon's contest. Double-A boys basketball is usually a lot of fun to watch, Dick. Here we go. Cut back by the Trojans. So let's play P.I. Double-A basketball. Notre Dame and their man-to-man -man taking it inside and stripping. The ball is mid-sack. Mitzak's in a lot of minutes for that illness. Will puts scrapping. up the first shot. That does not go. And the rebound is controlled by the Trojans. And on the floor with the basketball is Chance Wright. Tried to go inside, threw the ball right to Gianjobi. Gianjobi with a long pass. That is not handled, but Notre Dame will save it outside for three. That shot comes up a little short. And battle for the rebound. It's controlled by the Trojans. And we are running up and down the floor. Dick, I hope your neck is in <laughs> shape. The neck and the pencil. Two rebounds for the Crusaders, two turnovers for the Trojans. Defense, 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 Pat uh, Boyle with that rotating bench, but he can start five different guys, five different lineups. Defense, 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 yeah, actually, uh, with the injuries and the illnesses, he found uh, some guys that he can count on any time in a ball game. The downside, Dick, is he thought his team was good enough to win the Colonial League Championship, but he didn't have everybody healthy to do it. Good hand, quick hand by Stroop. He'll get it back. Stroop will lay it up and in as the pass came from Brian House. Palumbo, Rosetto, and Solano have all been more than spot starters for the Crusaders. Thank you. Hughes has really been their clutch guy. We're going to get a foul here. This will be on Brunel, and that's his first. Brunel, their outstanding offensive player, and they certainly don't want to get him into any kind of foul trouble. At the line is Max Hughes, 69% free throw shooter. The last three games, he has averaged 17.3 points per game. Big from that foul line, too. Max in the Salisbury game was nine for nine from the free throw line. Well, he's got 11, at least 11 in a row. Then we have our first tie of the basketball game. Both teams showing man to man. Consider to stay with it. And good defense by Notre Dame as they surrounded Vance Spencer. And he had absolutely nowhere to go with the basketball. Take a look. Spencer able to make this penetration along the base, but there's a whole crowd. That one from the behind, and that was successful. Mitzak gets credit for the block shot. Not just another bad spot to be, but getting out of there was House. And a good defensive play by Mitzak. As it's stolen back, however, by Stroop. So back-to-back -back turnovers 
Down the floor, Brunel. Brunel can't go, and they'll reset. Outside for three. Wright will put it down. Chance Wright with the triple. Turnover, turnover, you settle for a three. Stationary shooter, flat in the floor. At a 141st three. Put up by Piazza, that doesn't go. Biggest lead by anybody in the game. Belongs to the Trojans, up by three. Here's Brunel, left-handed shooter. He'll take a three-shot foul as Mitzak puts him on the floor. And Brunel will go to the line to shoot three. They did not supply us with individual foul shooting numbers, Dick. Look at this, way back there. That's that diving at the ball, Gary, in here. They are a 62% free throw shooting team. And Dick, they're gonna say this was after the shot. He will not get three foul shots from the line. Mitz oh, good, good move, Mitzak. Down the floor, he almost gets stripped. And that's gonna be up and not in by Kohler. Kohler came in from out of bounds. That'll be a turnover. No, they're going to call foul. foul. Foul will be on House. Reflection. Follow. Foul. Oh, look at that. Got a little make up for it underneath. And they don't get it anyway. So it stays 5 2. Wide open. Put out of bounds. Pull up jumper Spencer. That doesn't go. As the ball comes back outside the right. Brunel kicks it over to Stroop. Stroop can't get it to fall. And out of the pack comes Gian Joby. 50 shooter rebound here. Piazza inside. Nice pass. Good look. Up and in by Hughes. That guy is so solid. Trojans five. Hughes four. Very quick. Get our first sub of the basketball game. It will be for the Trojans. It'll be Tyler Shucker. He's a 6'1 senior, averages 8.1 a game. And then we get a number 45 who we do not have on the roster. Nor is he on the uh, rosters that were handed out. So we don't know right now who 45 is. That shot was blocked, taken by Shucker. Pick out one of those five JVs. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, maybe that's Zach Root. A freshman, but we're not sure. We'll try to find out for you. I think there was a time when uh, the PIAA required a form with a roster filled out on it. Those are the guys that had to be in uniform. Absolutely. Uniforms. Not quite as strict anymore. And Notre Dame's going to lose it. Hey, this team is every bit as quick as Notre Dame is. As that one, a little scoop shot by Burnell, and that's going to get a timeout called by Notre Dame. It'll be a 30-second timeout. As watch this little shot, and we'll be back up and in by Burnell. As a woman, the health issues you face will change over a lifetime. Whether you're an expected mother, caring for a family member, or battling osteoporosis, fast, accurate information is vital in making the best decision. Our MRI of Bethlehem is a recognized leader in imaging with radiologists and technologists that make you feel confident, knowing privacy is guaranteed and results will see to your doctor right away. Radiology and MRI of Bethlehem. We are back. The scoreboard is not correct. It should be 7-4. to four. They've got it 6-5. Now they make it 7-6. That's still not right. And we are going to get a foul called here on the Trojans. As this, I believe, is going to be on House. That's his second. Went inside with their size, Gary. We're successful. Joby at the foul line, and he is a 63 in center. As Wright comes back in, House now sits down. Get a look at 
go, the junior. He's all league. Nice rebound Good by Hitsack. Not taken. Not got a kick. Notre Dame will sub now as they'll bring David Salerno, Salerno in, a junior. 6.9 a game. A3 specialist. Salerno is 5'5". Five, five. Looks bigger than that. Is that Rosetto again? Instead of Salerno? And they're going to kick it out. And they're going to get a foul on the floor. So that's the 15 foul. Burnell now has two fouls. So that doesn't bode real well. For the Trojans, Burnell stays in there. One on one, Max Hughes, and he won't get anything. And boy, he almost picked up the third foul deck on Burnell. Oh, look at this. And he'll lose the basketball. Great opportunity to give it up. And that gets Vance Spencer off the bench. And that will get Brunel out of there. That was, they were within a whisker of the third foul on their leading score. Nice drive as Hughes will put it up and in. Great crossover. Frozen defender went back to the right. And we are tied at seven. Notre Dame has yet to lead in this game. We've had two ties. Final two minutes and 31 seconds. Well, they move around. Well, they do a lot of movement away from the ball. Little fake by Shucker, and then he shucks it up to the basket and puts it in. Kind of like that eight-point average coming off the bench. Showed you why there. Rosetto with a turnover. Turnovers 5-4, Crusaders. Or uh, Kohler goes out. Mitchak back in. Good ball movement. Quickly around to the other side. And the shot by Shucker doesn't go. Under two minutes. Open for the shot. Hits that. He'll drain it. That's a deuce. Tied it. Nine. They put three on the board, but I didn't see a three signal on the shot. Oh, a nice back cut. Didn't get one pass. So we'll hold off here as down the floor goes Rosetto. He can't get it to fall. There Rosetto, a 5'10 junior, number 14, 2.4 a game. Well, the scoreboard is all messed up. Now they correct it. Up and oh. in, nice drive by Spencer. What did that call a few years ago? Laredo from the hip. So they refuse to give Notre Dame the lead. They will, however, get another tie. As that's Hughes, Hughes with eight. In the first quarter, they've featured four ties. And a screwed up scoreboard. That one is drained by Shucker. Everybody hitting. Well, he's come off the bench and dropped a couple of shots. I say that every time that we go off the bench, got to respect him. This is Salerno. From the corner. No. And the rebound controlled by Chance Wright. Will they play for a final shot? Good switch. And we'll switch right back. Final 10 seconds. Trojans have never trailed here in the first quarter. Why do oops? I thought Chucker would take it. He didn't, so why not hit a triple? This team can hit the threes. That one by Stroop. He has 41 of them. So it's Stroop right at the buzzer. Bottom of the hole. 16-11. Trojans stay with us.
Since 1937, Walker's Pharmacy has been making life easier for you. The name you trust most when you need your prescription filled. That's because getting your prescription right is our number one priority. And only Walker's Pharmacy delivers anywhere in Allentown for free. Our wide selection of health products and mobile equipment, as well as our convenient hours, make Walker's Pharmacy the fast and convenient choice. I went to Walker's Pharmacy and they were able to supply all of my child's needed medications. I call Walker's Pharmacy for all my prescriptions and health care items and have them delivered to my door. Walker's Pharmacy in Allentown. Mark Mulchaney and Power Realty's sole mission is unprecedented real estate service. With an undying commitment to quality, Mark Mulchaney provides you professionalism, outstanding service, wealth of knowledge, experience, and reliability. Mark Mulchaney and Power Realty, the power to move you. 610-433-6600 or on the web at powerrealtyhomes.com. Very nice quarter for the Trojans of Troy. As they had, there's a good bucket up and in by Mitzak. Notre Dame shot 33% in that period, but Troy much better as they were at 58%. Turnovers get even, Gary, at five. Rebounds, Crusaders ahead, 6 4. Good drive and foul. Fouls against Notre Dame's Bart Palumbo, who is in the game. He's a 6'2 senior, averaging 3.1 a game. He's the young man who had the uh, herniated disc. And the first foul shot of the game by the Trojans does not go. They're a 62% free throw team. for Piazza. The Trojans have spread it out with five different players scoring. Notre Dame was three players doing all of their scoring. Down inside to Palumbo, we're going to help ball, and that will go to the Trojans. No turnover by Notre Dame. Some spotting. Coach Woodward's five years ago, I think they progressed just about every year. They he did, took them from practically nothing to a, well, 20 level issue. Yeah, his first year, four wins, second year, seven, then six, then 15, and this year, 22. That one does not drop. Good look by Wright. Here goes their scorer now. Nice play by Brunel. Nice drive. That was a good drive. Found a seam, went all the way. Team looks like they're going to be in this ball game to the very end. This is their first state appearance since 04. And guess who they played in 04? Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Mitchell hit the drive drive, the ball hit him back. Turnover. They lost to Notre Dame in the first round in 2004. Ooh, there's a nice move by Bernal. So Dick, we've seen him go left hand and this time right hand. Yeah, he really extends himself on a drive. Take a look at him with his right hand. We'll try to get back and show you the one he made prior to that with his left hand. Does not. It's a foul shot. They're 0 for 3 from the line. 65.9 they scored there. That's a lot of points. They give up 54. Notre Dame usually gives up only 50. Way outside. Dropped. Basket is good by... Blair Rosetto, that's his ninth triple of the year. Notre Dame's 118th. How about matching it? Spencer, and it rattled around, won't go. Nice save, good hustle by Wright. Pull up, and that one doesn't go for Brunel. Rebound is controlled by Piazza. Stolen away, turnover. Spencer with a basketball. The whole team in the side lane there, but it makes sense. Five guys coming in. And a foul on ND. 
which will be on Palumbo. Dick, let's go back and take a look at Brunel with his left hand. In this case, the natural hand finds the seam, goes through all the way. Love that he takes it close. And we just saw him going to the right the last time, then the lefty jumper. Dick, if he kicks one in, he'll be my player of the game. Yeah. Shucker makes the first foul shot for the Trojans as they go to one and four. Kohler's back in. He and Joby's back in. As Dick mentioned, we had a line change. Hughes back in. Rosetto stays out there. Piazza stays out there. One out of two for Shucker. Boy, they get big Notre Dame on that substitution. Look at that. They did not save it. So it stays with the Crusaders. Rosetto gets picked up by Stroop. Oh, nice pass, but not the finish by Kohler. Good pass by Gian Joby. Notre Dame basketball. Parkland, Lower Marion to follow. Well, these teams look identical, don't they? They do. They do. A little bit smaller, Troy. But they, uh, but they, they, they look they a little hustle. physically stronger. Both teams really hustle. Good ball movement. Everybody's always moving. They do a lot of screening away from the ball. Oh, no, what about it? Didn't get it to. Oh, that's uh, Brandon Cole, by the way, in there, number 23, 510 junior. Oh, he, 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 and then sort of elongates to the basket. He sure does. That's my house. House, okay. yep. Turnover. Turnover again. Notre Dame down by seven, matches their largest deficit. And now the. Trojans will throw it away. 4-1 turnovers in the second quarter, Notre Dame. <laughs> 45 back in there, still not sure who he is. That must be that Zach who he was that flash that was touted. Well, 33 Reeves is normally a sub, and we haven't seen him yet. So I have a sense that that might be Eric Reeves, so he's, uh, no, he's, not, he's too big to be uh, this guy's too short to be a Oh, nice, but they won't get the basket, but they will get Jimmy Joby on the line. Flash across the middle. Shucker picks up the foul. Jimmy Joby at the line, up to two. It looks like one of those foul shooting days for these two teams. I think the girls need to teach them how to shoot fouls. Or else use the same ball. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. That leaves you a little more room for error. The girls basketball is not as big as the boys. Two boys basketball sitting in that hoop. You all know. And quickly out of the pack on a rebound by Dean Joby. Shot, pull up, no, used short on it. They get a held ball, it'll belong to Notre Dame. Twenty-three seventeen. The Trojans have led by as many as seven. We've had four ties in this game. But all of those came early. It's our church back here. Woodward, both these coaches Dick, do a nice job of rotating their bench. From the corner, that won't drop for Mitzak. Well, Tiger Tony is concerned about getting him minutes. He didn't think he was ready yet. Way outside, House. He can't get it to fall, gets his own rebound. Bryant drops it off, and the basket up and in.
We'll go back and take a look at a guy we don't know who he is. We'll be back. The Lehigh Valley loves Mesalona Sports Bar and Grill with sports for fans of all shapes and sizes. Plus a huge selection of ice cold beverages and of course Mesalona's menu of great food. And with Mesalona's state of the art sound and light system, you can catch the Valley's hottest bands and DJs never pay a cover and dance the night away. For great food and drink, all the sports action and the best live entertainment and never a cover, Mesalona Sports Bar and Grill, Airport Road, Allentown. Welcome back. Right now, the Trojans have their largest lead of this game. They're up by eight. And we are not sure who scored that last bucket. It was number 45, but we're trying to find out for you. That outside shot won't go. And another good rebound by Bryant House. Hey, House is coming up big this game, guys. Inside, good block. Not big enough to shoot over the trees there. Vance Spencer has it blocked. Hughes pulls up. No, Notre Dame just not shooting the ball very well in this period. They are just two out of seven. That is too much size there. I'm not used to that. He's three perimeter specialists. Stolen away by Notre Dame. Salerno. And they find Kohler. Kohler can't find the basket, Dickey. Oh, he's short he's throwing up for oh. so far. Again, he had a long rest from that ankle injury. Left ankle heavily taped. And out of bounds. Turnover. They're eight. back in. Kohler is going to sit down. We want to make sure Kohler's ankle's all right. Kohler said, my ankle's all right, so then Pat yelled at him. Your ankle's all right, Dick. Make those shots. Check with the trainer, see if it's all right. If it is, go at him. <laughs> Two minutes to go now in the first half. Warm in here today with a one day outside. Nice play. Looks up. Mitzak takes the pass, puts it up. He gets fouled. That foul was called on number 45. But once we uh, find out who that guy is, we've got some catching up to do. He's got a foul, he's got his bucket. Mitzak is at the foul line, 52% free throw shooter, trying to cut the deficit to five. He will not. And the ball is saved. They're aiming for a chance at a four-point play. That's not a good pass. Colombo saw an open player, but he just threw the ball like a rocket to Mitzak. Just found that Seth Grantier is wearing number 45. So he has a foul and he has a bucket. And we'll get a foul here, hitting in the head. I think this is on Gian Joby. Go inside. First, one of the few times we've had a man posted. They just swatted that one carelessly. Right over two from the line. No longer. Now one for three has four points. Kohler back in. Brunel, who picked up two fouls kind of early, goes back to the bench. He has avoided the third. Both foul shots dropped. By chance right. 
Dick, this team has a uh, Colonial League look about it. They, they seem to play the game like a lot of good Colonial League teams do. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Gary. They, they look like they fit right in there, you know, middle or, or upper. Wide open, Max Hughes, and he can't get the three. That's going to be a foul. No! That thing. Boy, Kohler was getting pushed out of bounds. They're going to just say that he was out. So getting away with that one. Watch Tyler Shucker Dick with a push. Help him out, huh? That's the old elbow in the back. And I'll tell you, once a guy's in the air, you don't have to touch him very hard to move him about a foot. Mitch has getting another rest as Rosetto, number 14, returns. Bob Woodward, the head coach, did not play college basketball. And Bob Woodward did not like that call. Ninth Trojan turnover. Bob Woodward was a college football player. And right now, he has that football mentality. <laughs> Eight-point lead. Oh, that pass. Oh, oh. That's going to be a foul on, uh, I think, Kohler. We're going to go back and look at the play that got Bob Woodward upset. Oh, that's where he won. Oh, my. Dick, he deserved to be upset. Foul was on Kohler. I believe that was his second foul. Boy, Chance Wright got two shots on that play. They don't put up the number of the fouls, the person that commits the foul here tonight. It makes it a little tough. From the outside, that one by Grantier does not go. That's going to be a hell ball, so that belongs to the Trojan. But what that might mean is that Notre Dame will get the ball to start the second half if there's no more held balls. They score here. They're going to the locker room with the largest lead of the basketball game. That's a walk. Maybe not the largest lead of the game. Notre Dame will try to cut into this eight-point lead. Salerno back in. Sitting down, you see Bart Palumbo. Bring it up, contest that last shot. Three seconds, two, Hughes will get it off, good if it goes. It does not, at the half, it's Troy 27, Notre Dame 19, and their leading scorer, Jordan Brunel, has six of their 27 points. They have really spread it out. We'll be back with the first half numbers. Stay with us. Your under-insulated home can cost you hundreds. Now is the time to re-insulate with Lehigh Valley Insulation. In less than a day, our experienced crew of installers will thoroughly re-insulate your home. Our new insulation is cleaner and more energy efficient than ever. Plus, it's very affordable. Enjoy seasonable comfort under a blanket of premium insulation and cut your heating and cooling costs. Make sure your home measures up. Call Lehigh Valley Insulation for a free consultation. It's comfort that pays. These days I leave my car at home. I ride the bus, the smart choice. Atlanta Metro is the comfortable, fast, clean, and low-cost way to make your way around the valley. Atlanta Metro, the smart choice. Hi, I'm Mary Beth Burke, and I'm the women's basketball coach at Raving College. And today our skill set will be offensive moves uh, on the, on the uh, pass and learning how to use our correct pivot foot. So the basic drill we're going to start with is just cat passing the ball back and forth, catching the ball with two hands, and stepping in with your correct pivot foot. So we have all right-hand shooters here, so they should be using their left foot as their pivot foot at all times. So it's just a basic drill. They're catching it with two hands. They're able to rip the ball and be in a good offensive position to, to score, to pass, or to dribble. All right? Now, as we move along, what we're going to do is we'll, we'll start with two lines. 
one, you guys, and we'll set it up that they're coming through and catching the ball, curling around and catching with your left foot as your pivot foot. So Jess is coming across that way, and she has her left foot as a pivot foot. Now we're going to switch to the other side. It's a little bit different, but you got to work on catching the ball with your left foot as your pivot foot. And we have a lot of good shooters here, so they've worked on this. And uh, you want to make sure you stay with that left foot. That's our skill session for today, catching the ball with two hands, using your left foot as a right-handed shooter, uh, as your pivot foot coming off strong. Yakos, an Allentown tradition. Welcome back. It's halftime, and the Trojans of Troy are up by eight, and that is their largest lead of the game. They've been up by eight for a bit, and uh, once they got the lead, they did not relinquish it. Four ties in the first quarter, but once they jumped out on top, they have hung on, and they're a good basketball team. So let's take a look at the first half numbers. Here are the individual scorers, and Boy, Dick, if you're a head coach, you've got to love the way oh. Troy has spread out their offense. Seven guys in the scoring column, Gary. None higher than six. That is good, good teamwork. And Brunel is their leading scorer, and he has the six points, but he has gotten a lot of help today. On the Notre Dame side, Dick, they're just not shooting the ball very well, and uh, they have not gotten anything out of Andrew Kohler as he's had some inside shots. He just is not making them. Let's take a look at the team numbers. And you'll see that uh, Troy's shooting better than ND. Yeah, and I think some of that shooting, Gary, is reflected down there at the bottom in the rebounds. A Notre Dame, not a sizable lead in rebounds, you think they would. And the shots, are, the inside shots are missing, or a lot of easy outsized mismatches. Add to that a couple of triples by the Trojans, and they've got themselves an eight-point lead. When we come back, we'll have first-half highlights coming your way. This is a PIAA. Class 2A boys first round matchup. Stay with us. Ladies and gentlemen, the Beatles. Put some color in your world with a new floor from Mohawk Color Center. We've earned our name by bringing style and beauty to some of the finest homes in the world. Something Mohawk has been doing for over a century. For the greatest selection of carpets, hardwood, laminate, and even ceramic tile. From a name you can trust, Mohawk Color Center. Flooring made simple. Visit r j Carpet Connection, 922 North 3rd Street in Whitehall. Welcome back. Parkland Lower Marion to follow this game. We'll have that one for you live at 9.30. We'll have the Liberty William Penn basketball game from Hershey Park Arena. So all of that coming your way today on RCN Television. Right now, let's go back and take a look at the highlights from the first half. Here's Coach Tracy. All scoring for the most part. Notre Dame first. You're going to get the tight jumper. Number four. Uh, Andrew Mitzak, who's played a big part offensively. Max Hughes, great big game offensively. There's a drive. There's a little flash post and hit. Hughes again, the receiving end inside. Good dish. Hughes again. That's Mitzak. Excuse me, dish was from uh, Gene Kobe, John Giobi. And there was the outside shot. A little bit from the Trojan. Ooh, looked like he might have turned it over. Good lead pass off the turnover. That was Stroop. Again, outside this one, top of key. Stroop again. Stroop again. 
How the good drive by Brunel. Jordan Brunel, the high score. Followed off with one on the side by Brunel. See Van Spencer in action here. Tyler Little pump fake and hit. Good drive. Bryant House, very strong drive. And Seth Grant here from inside. It's the Trojans on top by eight. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back. He doesn't report to a management committee. He doesn't report to a marketing department. He reports to Mary Johnson's arthritis, to Sally Wickstrom's upset stomach, and to Greg Porter's poison oak. He's your family prescription center pharmacist. He lives and works right here in town. So that means he reports to you. Call Family Prescription Center today at 866-0709. Taking the time to care, Family Prescription Center. We are back. It's time for the trivia question today, brought to you by r Carpet Connection. Pat Boyle and Notre Dame won their fourth district title in the last seven years. Joe Arndt won one in 04, Eric Snyder in 06, and Rich Ortner in 08. Who did, or whom did Joe Arndt, Eric Snyder, and Rich Ortner coach? So you've got to come up with three correct answers. I wouldn't think that that would be all that difficult if you are a Lehigh Valley basketball fan. That first one might be a little tough, Gary. We invite you to tune in to Sports Talk every Thursday at 6 o'clock. This Thursday, the panel includes North Penn head coach and former Whitehall and Central coach Ron Hassler, his assistant Bob Gilbert, and RCN's Dennis Love. RCN Sports Talk continues after the basketball season in the spring and the summer. Look for Phillies broadcaster Tom McCarthy, members of the Leah Valley Iron Pigs, local coaches, coaches, and players. You can send us your opinions and questions at any time by emailing us at rcnsportstalk at rcn.com. We'll read your comments live on our next show. RCN Sports Talk every Thursday, 6 to 7, live on RCN 4. Dick, what do the Crusaders have to do now to get themselves back in this ballgame? Well, they got to hit some of the traditional shots, Gary. I want to see them go a little bit beyond the range, maybe, and, and get really, really get accurate. Uh, going to the big lineup takes away a little bit. Now there is an interesting outfit. That is a Notre Dame fan riding an ostrich. Uh, you know what, I, I like creativity like that. Now it's a little hard probably to drive the car though, don't you think? <laughs> Dick has no sympathy for this. Well, I'm wondering where you feed them at halftime of that game. <laughs> Do they have an ostrich pen or what? Or what? Well, remember that held ball? Oh, look, at look at that. That held ball they give right back, Dick. That takes away from it right there. There's that drive again. And there's Brunel putting it up. And it doesn't go. Rebound is controlled inside by Gian Joby. So with the basketball for Notre Dame is Max Hughes. Out there along with Kohler, Gian Joby, Piazza, and Andrew Mitzak. Turn around, up and in. Basket. By Piazza. That's the other thing I was going to suggest, Gary, when you say how to. Uh, take advantage of that forward side. I mean, this is a pretty small Trojan team. It's a six-point deficit for Notre Dame. We're going to get a foul on the outside. This will be on mid-sack. The shot won't count. So we'll have it underneath their own basket. Jack picks up his third foul. Brunel thought he got fouled, no call. Bob Woodward thought he got fouled too. They're going to get the ball back. Here comes Stroop, two on one. Gives it to Brunel, does not get it. Didn't have a great angle. And he really didn't get a great shot. So Notre Dame replies with a transition bucket of their own by Mitzak. It's a four point lead. Down inside, right, right has it blocked for the foul. Wasn't a little bit fine in the men, Gary. Just a little bit late already at base. 
fouls on Piazza. And that'll send right to the foul line. Chance has created a lot of chances today. He's two for four from the line. I think he's got a little bit of a flick at the end on his foul shot. That keeps it from being a soft shot. That's how the ball kind of flips out of his hand. That's not good for him. Trojans out through the first minute and a half. Turn around. That doesn't go, but there's an easy one for Piazza. His second field goal of the quarter. And that four-nothing edge of the board, something to do with it. Mitzak just Mitzak. picked up his fourth foul. Wow, Notre Dame with three team fouls already. We haven't played two minutes. Boy, they had a good four-nothing border edge. Brunel kicks it out. Pull-up jump shot by House. No, instead he dropped it down to Brunel. And Dick Brunel's not giving them what they normally get out of him. Well, I don't know why he went through and under there and shot on the left side. He had it on the right side. Nice entry. No, not caught by Gene Joby. That was the right idea. Gene Joby had position. Tyler Shucker into the game as Brunel will sit down. He gets a little bit of a rest, not having one of his better games. He averages 20 a game. That coming off of a 33-point game in the consolation. And they beat Southern Columbia 87 to 66. Here comes ND. Hughes on the move. Nice job defensively by Vance Spencer. A strip from behind by Hughes. Notre Dame can tie it or take the lead. They have never led in this game. That doesn't go. Battle up and in and tapped by Piazza. It's all Piazza here in the third quarter. Timeout called by Bob Woodward. He got it, Dick, right before Ooh. the steal. So we'll go back to the trivia question. Pat Boyle, four district titles, seven years. Joe Art won one in 04, what team? Eric Snyder, 06, what team? Rich Ordner, 08, what team? Well, Joey Art, probably the hardest to remember. Penn Argel, Eric still at Caddy. Rich Ordner still at Northern Lehigh. Dick, I'm going to be embarrassed by the next tri trivia question. Oh, really? in the, in the, I just ran out of creativity. Rich Ordner just being challenged by his brother David, who took over the Notre Dame, uh, the Northern Lehigh Girls program. Preparing for five games this weekend, you have to come up with five trivia questions. Four of them not too bad, but oh, the next game. <laughs> no booing, please. I'll get you a quick one. Sir. <laughs> Five ties, that's where we are right now. At the fifth tie, Notre Dame has come back from an eight-point halftime deficit. They made up those eight points in three minutes. Troy hasn't scored yet. And they won't score here. Rebound is controlled by Kohler. That rebound edge has helped there in third quarter. Seven nothing. with six third quarter points. Inside, Hughes drops it off and make it eight third quarter points for Piazza. Notre Dame with their first lead of the basketball game. What a run. They're on a 10-0 run. Boy, Troy can't hit anything right now. With the basketball, Max Hughes. Hughes gets it over as they go perimeter. And there's a nice pass down the lane. Andrew Kohler up and in. He said those big guys are going to have to start playing. They have shown it in the four minutes plus. 
Bob Luger looks to his bench. He wants to try to find somebody to put the ball in the basket. It just won't fall. They better check to make sure there's a hole there. Way outside, Kohler, and he'll hit a triple. Oh, my, that's his 16th of the year. Come on. This play's starting to fill up on this side. Not so much on the other side. 15-0-1. Grinnell, they're going to give him the basket. That will stop the run. Takes him four minutes and... 48 seconds to score. Dave Sparno just couldn't get the angle here, Barry. Gets one more step out, funny, might have gotten the call. At the line will be Brunel. He's 0 for 1. He's trying to complete a three point play, get his team to within four. And he's got it. The Trojans now four out of 10 from the foul line. Three minutes to go, third quarter. Salerno. That's Piazza. Ian Joby. Max Hughes outside. He's got the three. So one team can't miss. The other team really struggling. That's the 29th triple by Hughes on the year. And offensively, Gary's about as simple as you can get. Pull up jump shot, and that doesn't fall for Shucker. It's going to be Notre Dame basketball. In comes Stroop. Out goes Shucker. <laughs> now I'm going their largest lead, seven. Driving in, kick it out. Baseline drive. Unable to finish it is Kohler. We're going to get a foul on ND. Dick, that is their 15 foul. Trojans don't have any. Giangiobi, I think, over the top. Kohler's been making that move there, but everything's been short when he's in tight. Colombo in for Notre Dame. As Giangiobi gets a rest. Boy, Dick, we've had a 15-point turnaround in this quarter in less than six minutes. How bad it's been for the Trojans. And another mental mistake. Quickly down the floor in transition. Hugh wants it. No, Piazza up and in. Piazza has 10 third quarter points. And that's enough for Bob Woodward. He's going to call a timeout. His ball club down by a nine point deficit 39 to 30 and once again with uh, all the schedules being put out this weekend probably by Monday at 11 we invite you to call at around 11:30 on Monday and you'll know exactly what we're doing right now the Northampton girls alive the Notre Dame girls are alive for Tuesday and on Wednesday we know Central Catholic is alive 610-443-2906 Give that line a call, and we will let you know where we will be What a, Tuesday and Wednesday. What a run, Gary. 9-1 on the boards. And, of course, the scoreboard's even bigger. Yeah, 20-3 in this quarter. There goes Brunel. We'll drop it off. They need a little more of that, oh. and even that doesn't go. It's just been a nightmare. Now Brunel's open. He'll put it up. That won't go. Rebound by Stroop. That finally does go. Dick, with all of this, it's only a seven-point lead. So there no find Hughes. Hughes walks. Turnover by the Crusaders. It's a 
some reason, everybody's sitting on this side of the gym yeah. with a lot of seats on the other Are side of the gym. Trying to kill them or not? That's home side, is it? So we must be over here with the Trojan of Parkland High School. There's a walking violation. Boy, there they have an opportunity to cut into the Notre Dame lead. An unforced error. Hughes back in, and Piazza deserves a round of applause. He has 10 of the 20 points in the quarter. got him for three. That's the first foul of the second half by the Trojans. Bob Woodward is not liking the way Notre Dame sets their screens and he lets the officials know we have not had a moving screen call. We had a point in that we certainly had one, one, oh, one where uh, the football block was thrown. And it goes Hughes. It up. That's outside. They're going to play for a final shot. Why not? They're up by seven. Now they'll go. Hughes with it. Spread out. A lot of space. Oh, that's going to be a foul. That has to be a block. Yeah, sticking the knee out was Brunel. And Dick, he just picked up his third foul. Take a look. Watch his knee. Boy, that was not a good foul to take for him. Five seconds. Way outside. Oh, my. David Salerno with his first bucket of the game. His 45th triple of the year at the buzzer. David Salerno from downtown. We'll be back. Hey, basketball fans, if you love dealing with a winning team, head to the leader, Kleckner's in Whitehall and Amaz for the fabulous GE tip-off sale. Browse our huge selection of GE ranges, GE refrigerators, GE dishwashers, GE washers, and GE dryers. Now at Kleckner's, get great savings plus free delivery, free Holloway of old, a full parts department and their own factory train tech. Stop in today. See why Kleckner's has been serving the Lehigh Valley since 1945. Two locations, Kleckner's, 2177 MacArthur Road in Whitehall and 575 Chestnut Street, Amaz. <laughs> Since the Overhead Door Company makes the original overhead door, the people who install and service them take them pretty seriously. Call or log on for the overhead door dealer nearest you. Welcome back. Brunel tries to take it inside, and it will be Trojan basketball. Notre Dame 10 for 14 in that quarter for 71%. Now shooting 46% in the game. On the other hand, just 36% shooting now for Troy. As Dick, they only had two field goals in 11 attempts. Came four edge on the boards, really helped. Came three edge. Foul's on Kohler, that's his third, team's sixth foul. Notre Dame's in a little bit of team foul trouble. But boy, boy's not making anything right now. Let me correct myself. That they were three for 14 in that quarter. That is a 21% shooting average. Now the pressure. We're we'll bringing up here in the fourth quarter. Full court, man. Better name handles the ball pretty well. Though. It goes Hughes. Salerno wide open. Nice pass. Hughes to Salerno, and it's an 11-point lead, the largest lead of the night, or the afternoon. Textbook break of the, of the press. A triple. That is dropped. They needed one. Bryant House 
drops the three. That's their third of the game. An eight point ball game. Bob Woodward imploring his defense to get a stop here. And Pat wisely chases four men away and let him, lets Hughes bring it up himself. And Notre Dame pretty difficult to pressure. Hughes inside. Well, I tried to find Salerno, but that ball is kicked. So it'll be Notre Dame basketball. That's a Lerno shot at the end of the third was like our Central Catholic girls shot at the end of halftime. Bob Woodward pacing the sideline. No. No. How about Andrew Cole? He let Gian Joby try two, and then he cleaned up. Size and telling, Billy. Two point blank offensive rebounds. Kohler now with seven second half points. Man. I would think Grinnell Dick would like to go back and start this game over again. He has really struggled. Hughes kicks it out to Salerno. Back to Lyon. But Hughes will race to get the basketball. Notre Dame by 10, six minutes to go. Central Catholic has already won their basketball game today. Kohler will get foul. Foul will be on Stroop. That's what's so nice about Kohler at 6'5". Play him outside, play him wing, handle the ball, and now take him under. Got his mismatch. Notre Dame score, or the Central Catholic score, by the way, 50 to 26. Kohler is 65 percenter. This is his first time at the line. Notre Dame not doing too well for all of these. Four for nine. So they come up empty on that possession and still get the ball back. And Bob Woodward. Body language shows his frustration. Can he do it again? No, he cannot. High now of the essence. That'll be a foul. This is going to be on Kohler. Nice job of forcing that foul by House. I've got Kohler for four. Drop for House. You know what? This kid's played a pretty good game. Very good game. They don't count on him for a lot. In fact, I'm just thinking they better go to him a lot more. Again for his seventh point. And the game is under double figures. And it's going to hit the wire. It did. It won't count. That goes down as a miss. It just hits the wire. And that throws it right through the basket. Rosetto backcourt violation. Didn't even know it, Gary. Take a look. Watch his feet. He's over. He's back. No call. Well, Burnell earned that one. Look he at his 12. Look at Coach Woodward. Seven point game. Cleared out against the Hughes, brings it up alone. Team has a history of hitting three, so don't count them out. And 43 of them. They tried Hughes, they'll get crushed. Let's see the cup to take a look. That's green on him and up. I say he wasn't shooting. Maybe he was on the floor there, but he, he leaned all over him. That's the fourth foul on House. Kohler and Mitchak. 
check into the Crusader. Look at well, that that's one. the way to check in. Wow. As Gian Joby on the out of bounds play gets his first field goal. Notre Dame spreading things around. Inside. Brunel, no, he gets fouled. Dick, I think they're going to say this was a non shooting foul. Maybe had him on the spin. Nope, one and one. Oh, it's third. How can you say that's not a shooting foul? So Brunel goes shooting one and one, although it sure looked like he was in the act of shooting. But he's only going to get a one and one, not a two shot foul. Notre Dame, of course, over the limit. And that's why you wanted the two shot foul. Because he did not make the first one. their time. Knocked out of bounds by Brunel. Crusaders keep the ball. Two kicks under four minutes. Nice uh, nice personality is in there. Today. Two guards control it. And then three muscle guys. And of course with Foley, Brunel on. Yeah, he's pretty comfortable outside. There goes Hughes. Dropping it off. And we're going to get a push foul here. That'll be a non-shooting foul. Fifth team foul against Shucker. Bowler, Hughes out of the corner, does not go, knocked out of bounds, it'll stay with Notre Dame. Side up and in, basket by Mitzat. He has 10. Another mismatch, Gary. Caught him on the older play. A lead back to 11. It's in their largest lead of the game. This will be the uh, fourth foul on Kohler. Kohler does a lot of grabbing and reaching. He is those tic tac fouls. The line, Stroop, not been there. Seven points. And this place is uh, starting to have a nice crowd here. Of course, the 4A games usually draw the biggest crowd. They're the biggest school. Notre Dame always brings a nice contingent. Plenty of Parkland people here. And the Lower Marion people starting to pile in. They get two back. So it's a nine point deficit now for the Trojans of Troy. Last night when we started, Dick, there were uh, 256 teams as we started today. There were 96 and 96, 192 teams left, 96 boys teams, 96 girls teams. Yeah, that first round, that's the one, get you out. Can't look forward to the next one. Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. Here you get a look at Pat Boyle. He just won his 250th game at Notre Dame. He's 250 and 108 in 13 seasons. I was surprised with the timeout there. You know, he had the clock, good. Bob Woodward out on the floor. He wanted a walk. Instead, he'll get a steal. Watch out. It's a seven-point game. Brunel with 14. Three points, or three minutes to go. On his own pressure now. Inside, easy. No, not made. Hustling his mid-sack will put it up again. Not made. Rebound by Howard. Now you start biting the nails a little bit. Back cut up and in, Brunel. Nice back cut, good pass from Brian House. 
of the diamond pressure than they for the last six points scored by the Trojans. Salerno. No. Rebound, Troop. The next foul by Notre Dame will put the Trojans on the line to shoot two, no matter what. Time out. Ball by Bob Woodward. He called two timeouts early in this game. Now he calls his third timeout. Dick, I think he realizes how important this possession could be. As they walk back to the Notre Dame huddle, Patrick sort of questioned that last shot. I don't know if we need a 12-foot jumper. With that said, Notre Dame is kind of an antsy offensive team. Oh, yeah, they And I don't know if them holding the ball is a personality they do real well. So they may have to just go for it as opposed to hanging on to it. Here come the Trojans. Trappy group. They won the first half by eight. And as you get a look at uh, Jim Haney, he's evaluating officials. Elaine Arntz is the game manager. Sorono taken out during that timeout. Oh, they're going to call offensive. Oh, big call. On uh, Hughes is the one who took it. Burnell picks up his fourth. Like to get another look. Here it is. Watch your slide. Bad call. I agree. Bad Still call. Moving. Hughes was not there. Oh, that little large. ND with a basketball. Must now start they've got to take advantage. The Must start doubling the ball. Hughes. And it's 45. Ooh, no call there. Wow. Wow, that was a foul. And that would have been the fifth pick on Vernell. And out, yeah. And they're shooting on that next one. Vernell wants to go. He does. He doesn't get it. Rebound is controlled by Stroop. A couple of strange calls. One a no call, one a bad call. They can't take a lot of time. They're down five. Start. They want to find that guy. Let him make the move. He kicks it out. Wow. Everybody's going away from him. I know. Well, they got military. No, turned five. over first. Five-second violation before the timeout call. Ooh, how about those last two possessions? Now Notre Dame will probably have to make their foul shot. We'll get a foul here on right. It's just the one and one, Dick. All right, foul shot, real important. Dan Joby is two for four from the line. He does not get the front end of a one and one. It's in the hands of Brunel. He'll take it. He'll go. And he's going to get fouled. Wow. This is on Hughes. And it, this looked like Brunel just lost the ball. Take a look. He did this behind the back one other time. Boy, I don't know. All of a sudden, the tagging rule is in effect. They need him. He got the first. for every point in this game. He has 17. He can make it a one possession game. He does. Oh, oh, oh. They're going to get a foul here on House. But if we go back, that's going to be House's fifth. We go back and look at this play. 
If that foul's not committed, Notre Dame was in danger, Dick, of passing the ball back to a guy who had not established inbounds. Take a look. That would have been close. Brian House didn't have a lot of points, but boy, did he work hard. He ends up with six. So here's Gian Joby again. Missed the front end. Number one on one the last time he went to the line. Not this time. It's a two possession game. Gets Imhotep Charter or Delone Catholic. Ooh, you don't want to be fouling. You don't want to be fouling. Ian Joby will pick up the foul. Two shot foul. First of all, tough shot though. Off balance, everything else. And you want that clock to run at all costs. Imagine if he would have dropped that, he could have cut it to two with his foul shot. Every foul shot big, he missed. Best he can do is cut the deficit to four. Patrick did this in the district final, Gary. Little offense, defense. Extra ball handler now. It's a four-point Notre Dame lead. There's a quick foul. As that will send Salerno to the line. Or check it, that's Hughes. Still one on one. Pat Hughes, or Max Hughes, 69% from the free throw line. Two for two in this ball game. was on Brunel, so he finished. They're waiting for a sub to come in. So Dick, Jordan Brunel, 1,000-point score. In fact, over 1,300 points. will sit down, having scored 19 points in this game. You score 48 there, and you have over half of it, 25-plus sitting on the bench now. Fouled out. Blocked by Hughes. Hughes with 12 points. There's a guy that went nine for nine down the, down the stretch in the district final. And he's now 13 for 13 over the last couple of games. No. Nope. That should just about do it. And had forced to call that foul on Grant Deere. So let's go to Ayako's player of the game, and he got it done in the third quarter, Dick, when Notre Dame put up 23 points. Nick Piazza. When they dominated the board, he was dominating inside. I know my first, the first words that Pat's going to say to me when he sees me next. I'd like that tone at the end. <laughs> Fuller at the line. And Andrew started out slowly but certainly picked it up. He has eight points now, all in the second half. And he's looking for nine. Four, three. Spencer, no. That'll do it. No sense in fouling now. Notre Dame's gonna win this ball again. 56. To 48, they will advance. Is Imhotep in their future, Dick? Well, same road like as it was last year, Gary. This time they come through with a great second half performance, clutch fouls at the end when they needed them, six consecutive. And I tell you, I thought the size today was the real difference. They had four guys in there that oversized and outmatched the defenders. All right, our Lehigh Valley installation leading scorer of the game is on the other side of the court. That is the Trojans, Jordan Brunel, as he had 19 points in the ball game. He is our Lehigh Valley installation player of the game. All right, here's how the numbers shook out. 
for the Trojans of Troy. Their 48 points came on 17 field goals. They had three triples in the game. They were 11 for 21. From the foul line, they were led by Brunel with 19 points. Nobody else in double figures. Christopher Stroop had nine points in the game. The Trojan season ends 22 and five. And once again, they're stopped in the first round of the PIAA playoffs. Our thanks to Bob Woodward for all of his assistance. For Notre Dame, they're 56 points on 21 field goals. They were 10 for 16 from the foul line. Double figure scoring out of Hughes with 13. Andrew Kohler had just nine in the game, but he was close. Mitzak with 10 and Piazza with 10. Notre Dame goes to 21 and five, and they will face either Imhotep Charter or the lone Catholic on Wednesday night. And we will most probably have that ball game, but again, it all depends on where these games will be played. Notre Dame goes to 21 and five. The Crusaders win it by a 56 to 48 score coming up. We'll have Parkland against Lower Marion. That ball game to follow. We will be back in about 10 minutes or so. So please stay with us. Notre Dame is the winner for Dick Tracy. For the RCN television team, headed up by Rick Kehoe. I'm Gary Laubach. Goodbye for now. <laughs>